So again, if you guys get bumped out, uh, just come back in and make sure you're on mute when you come back in. Our entire first chapter, it's a review of the last few chapters of Algebra 1, and we're going to be talking about quadratic functions. Okay, a quadratic function in X, our Y variable is to the first power. And then the X variable, highest power, is two. So any function that I write where the power of y is to the first power and then the highest power of x is to the second power is a quadratic function. So I can write y equals x squared is a quadratic function. Um, x squared over y equals 5 is a quadratic function y equals 25x squared minus 4x plus 10. That is a quadratic function. Each one of those examples, y is to the first power, and the highest power of x is the second power. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions on that first slide before I go to the next one? If so, type it in chat. The graph of a quadratic function. Our good old generic quadratic function. One, one, two, two, three, four, one, two. So I'm going to do a rough graph of y equals x squared. If I put a 0 in, I get 0. If I put a 1 in, I get 1. If I put a 2 in, I get 4. Negative 1, I get 1. Negative 2, I get 4. This is a rough graph of y equals x squared. This is our parent function. So if anybody asks what the parent function is for a quadratic formula, or I mean a quadratic function or quadratic equation, it's y equals x squared. Some key things about this graph. It has a name. It is the shape of this graph is called a parabola. This, the only time that you get to use the name parabola is if it is a quadratic function. If I were to graph y equals x to the fourth, the graph is going to look very similar to y equals x squared, but this is not a parabola. The only time that you get to call the shape of a graph a parabola is if it is a quadratic function. The bottom of the graph, or if the graph is upside down, the top of the graph, either the bottom of the graph or the top of the graph, the name of that point is called the vertex of the parabola. The vertical line that goes through the vertex the one I'm dotting in in gold here. That vertical line has two different names. It is either called the line of symmetry or it's called the axis of symmetry.
The graph of a parabola is a mirror image that you can fold across that line and the other each side is going to be identical to each other folded across that line. Does anybody have any questions on this slide before I go to the next one? I don't see any popping in here, so we're going to go boom. So we're going to type and talk about the forms of a quadratic function. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to write down the forms the way they are written down in the textbook. And if you are going to go on to college algebra, the forms have a couple of different names and I'm going to put those in a different color next to it for you. But the first form they have is y equals the number times x squared plus a number times x plus a number. Okay, and here a cannot be equal to zero. Your textbook calls this standard form. If you go to a college algebra textbook, they will call this general form. The next form that we talk about is, that I'm gonna talk about in order, is y equals a, x minus p, x minus q. And again here, a cannot be zero. And where the p and q are actually representing p comma zero and q comma zero are the x-intercepts. And because the x-intercepts off of this, this is called intercept form. Okay. The last form we have looks like this. y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Again, in all of these, a can't be zero because if a is zero, I no longer have a quadratic function. In this case, the point h comma k is the vertex of the graph. And in our high school textbook, we call this the vertex form. And if you go to college algebra textbooks, they're going to call this one the standard form. And when we come back to class in December and we talk about all sorts of other different types of functions and we see how to represent all these other different types of functions, you will see why the college algebra textbooks call the form that I have written last as the standard form. So for the purpose of this class, standard is ax squared plus bx plus c. The second one is my intercept form, and the third one is my vertex form. Any questions on the representation of the three forms? Cool. Hopefully I haven't put you all to sleep yet. is graphing our quadratic functions. In general, if I ask you to graph a quadratic function, you need to give me a minimum of five points. Of those five points, at, um, you must include the vertex.
And then you have to give me a, uh-oh. My Jamboard closed. Let me reopen it. Sorry about that. Um, that's what happens when your fat belly touches the screen, I guess. Good thing it auto saves. Um, we're going to go to our screen. I'm going to repeat what I've said here. For graphing quadratic functions, you need to give me a minimum of five points. You must include the vertex. And at least two points on each arm. Now what you can do is you can graph two points like on the right hand arm, then you can use the axis of symmetry to come up with the two points that are gonna be required on the left hand arm. So a minimum of five points, you must, 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 must always include the vertex and you have to have at least two points on each arm. It's nice to plot the x-intercepts and the y-intercept if, if easy to find. Okay. The x-intercepts are easy, easy to find. if you're in intercept form. The y-intercept is easy to find if you are in standard form. So it's really easy if it's in standard form. It's kind of easy if you are in, in intercept form. And it's not too difficult if you are in the vertex form. And I'm gonna show you how to find it in each one of these. So you don't always have to plot the x-intercepts unless it, uh, graph is specifically asking you to graph the x-intercepts. Sometimes we'll graph using um, information that we can find and we'll be able to estimate the x-intercepts based off of the graph. And after you've plotted the points that you can easily find, then we just pick some x's. And we're gonna actually write, pick some smart x's and solve for y. And this will allow us to find other points on our graph. So. Anybody have any questions on this before I go over some general stuff about our parent function and what things do? Better open up chat. Um, that is something to do with our internet. Um, I don't think the audio is lagging. I think it's uh, just bad internet connection. So I guess you can call it a lag. And hopefully the recording actually is better than the video for those one person that's not here. So, I'm just going to rough sketch the parent function y equals x squared. So this is just a rough sketch of y equals x squared. Okay, if you go back and look at all three forms of the quadratic function, they all had a letter A in them. The A is called our scaling factor.
if a is bigger than one, we're going to say that the parabola is steeper. Okay. Um, if a is between zero, we're going to, I'll put the absolute value of a in here. If the absolute value of a is between zero and one, we're going to make the graph flatter. So the first case, if A is more than one, it makes it steeper. If A is, um, the absolute value of A is between zero and one, it makes the graph flatter. The last thing that A helps me do, if A is less than zero, i.e. if it's negative, the graph goes upside down. So if I have a negative A, let's use the gold here, my graph would just flip upside down and across the x-axis there. If a graph is right side up, which are the top three, the vertex is gonna be at the minimum. The graph is upside down like the bottom one, the vertex is gonna be at the maximum. Okay, some of your homework questions ask you, does the graph open up or down? Is, is the vertex a minimum or a maximum? So that's how you can answer the questions, just by looking at the A. Next thing I want to talk about is how to find the vertex. Remember, we had to plot the vertex every single time. If it is in vertex form, I'm going to do the easiest one first. If it's in that form, for example, y equals 2, x minus 4, plus 5, the vertex is at the opposite of whatever number is being done to h, I mean to x there, so the opposite of negative h is h, and then the same as the k term right there. So in my example here, my vertex would be at positive 4, comma, positive five. I can also tell you that this graph opens up because the A, the two, is positive. This graph its vertex is at negative five, negative four. And this graph opens down. I'm going to do a quick rough sketch of the two examples I have here. Again, the difference between a sketch and a graph is a sketch, you're going to give me the vertex and then the shape. A graph, you're going to give me five, five points minimum. So on this one, my vertex is at four, five. So four, five is somewhere like this, and I know it opens up. The other one is at the vertex negative five, negative four and this one opened down. Notice in those two examples, there are never going to be any x-intercepts. Okay, um, just be aware of that. You know, some questions may ask, hey, what are the x-intercepts of this graph? The answer may be there aren't any. The next form that we can find it from is our intercept form. which was y equals a, x minus p, x minus q. And again, we know that the points p comma zero and q comma zero are x-intercepts. If I have the points p comma zero and x comma zero, I'm gonna call this p zero. And then other one, I'm gonna call this one Q zero. 
based off of the fact that every single parabola has a line of symmetry that the graph is mirrored over, the way that I'm going to find the x-coordinate of the, the um, vertex is I'm going to go halfway in between P and Q. If I go halfway in between P and Q, that's going to find my line of symmetry. So x-coordinate of the vertex is halfway in between P and Q. And if I want to find the y-coordinate of my vertex, I put this x number back into my original equation. And this the way the thing I wrote on the right hand side was hey take p plus q divided by two and stick it into your function. So that's how you're going to find the x the x and y coordinates if it's an intercept form. Before I go do an example of this one, are there any questions? Okay, next slide. So if my examples from intercept form are going to be as follows. Y equals 2, X minus 4, X plus 2. So in order for me to find the X coordinate of the vertex, my X coordinate of the vertex is P plus Q over 2. Where my P is the positive 4, my Q is a negative 2 which is four minus two over two, which is one. Let me do one more step there. So that is the X coordinate of my vertex. Now to find the Y coordinate, I am gonna put that number one into my original equation for X. I'm gonna write two. I'm gonna copy everything down except for the X's. And inside for the X, I'm going to put the number one. And then I'm going to do the stuff inside the parentheses. So I have two times negative three times positive three. One thing I want to point out here is that if you are doing the intercept form correctly to find the vertex, these will always the opposites. So if you've put the correct X in to find the Y number for the vertex, you will always get a number and it's negative, or you'll always get two zeros. Okay? So if I want to continue this work, I do negative three times three is negative nine times two is negative 18. So my vertex in this case is at the point one comma negative 18. Do I need to do a second example of finding the vertex from intercept form? If you want me to do a second example, type yes in chat, please. I'm not seeing anything in that chat. Let me check my computer to make sure I'm working. I do see one yes. So I'm going to do y equals negative 2, x plus 5 times x plus 3. So I need to find the x coordinate of the vertex. I know the x coordinate of my vertex is equal to p plus q divided by 2. The p is the opposite number inside the first parentheses. The Q is the opposite of the number that's inside the second parenthesis. So I get negative five minus three over two, which is negative eight over two, which is four. So I have found the X coordinate. To find the Y coordinate, I copy my original equation, except where there's an X, I'm gonna leave it blank for right now. Inside the blank, I put in what X is equal to. 
That's a negative four. I need to fix that to a negative four. That means these are negative fours. I do the simple, nice little arithmetic. Negative four plus five is one. Negative four plus three is negative one. I do my quick Mr. Taylor check to make sure it makes sense. Negative one and one are opposites of each other. That makes sense. Multiply everything together and I get the positive number three. So my intercept is at negative four. My vertex is at negative four comma three. So the key point here is the P is the opposite of the number that's inside the first parentheses. The Q is the opposite of the number that's inside the second parentheses. In my forms that you're gonna see throughout the rest of the year, if it's something that's inside the parentheses, in like 90% of the time when I'm referencing it with a letter, it's going to be the opposite of what's inside the parentheses. And my last form to find the vertex, which is how you're going to find most of them, and that is from the standard form. The following equation you need to memorize. You are going to use it for the rest of this year. If you go to college algebra, you're going to use it. It's an easy way to help find the minimums and maximums of quadratics that you see on the Smarter Balance test if you're a junior, on the ACT and SAT tests. The vertex X is found at the, by taking negative B over 2A. This is also the equation for the line of symmetry. So negative B over 2A is how I'm going to find the X coordinate of the vertex. The Y coordinate, I just put that negative B over 2A into my function. So for my first example, Y equals 2X squared plus 4X minus 6. If I want to find the vertex, I identify my A, I identify my B. My B is four, so I put that down. My A is two. The X coordinate is equal to negative B over two A, which would be negative four over two times two, which is negative four over four, which is negative one. And once you know the X coordinate of the vertex, you can stick that X number back into your original equation. Y equals two times negative one squared plus four times negative one minus six. I'm gonna stop and come back. works. I stopped and came back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the math here following the order of operations. First thing I want to do is square negative one. Negative one times negative one is a positive one. One times two is two. Four times negative one is a negative four. So I have two minus ten, which is negative eight. My vertex is at negative one, negative eight. Okay, what I'm going to do now is, if you do have your homework sheets available, I'm going to be doing some graphs, full-blown graphs from homework 111 and 112. You guys were assigned, I believe, the left two columns on these. I'm going to check really quick. 
Um, you were assigned odds on 111 and left two columns on 112. So for some practice graphing in standard form on homework 111, I am going to graph 12 and 18. On homework 112, since you're doing the left two columns, I will graph number six, nine, and 12. Then we're gonna talk how to turn um, other forms back into standard form. So if you have the hard, hard copy of the worksheets in front of you, you'll see the equations. I'm gonna write the equations down also as I graph these. So the first one I have is y equals 2x squared plus 6x plus 1. First thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to find the vertex. The vertex x, which I'm going to do v sub x, is equal to negative v over 2a, which is negative 6 over 2 times 2, which is negative 6 fourths, which is negative 3 halves. I am then going to put that negative 3 halves in for x to find my vertex y. So I have 2 times negative 3 halves squared plus 6 times negative 3 halves plus 1. If I square negative 3 halves, I end up with 9 fourths. And this is negative 18 halves for right now. Uh, multiply that out, I get 18 fourths, which is 9 halves, minus 18 halves, um, plus 2 halves. 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7 halves. So my vertex for this one is at the point negative 3 halves, comma, negative 7 halves. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two. So I'm going to plot a point at negative one and a half, comma, negative three and a half. Negative one and a half, negative three and a half. Once I plot the vertex, I draw my line of symmetry so that I can remember what it is. Now, I told you it's really, really easy to find the y-intercept if you're in standard form. The y-intercept, if you're in standard form, is equal to c, or the point 0, comma, c. That's my y-intercept. You find the y-intercept by putting a 0 in for x. If I put a 0 in for the first x, this term becomes 0. If I put a zero in for this X, this term becomes zero and you're left with just the one. So right now what I'm doing is I'm finding convenient points to plot. I'm gonna use symmetry to come up with a point on the left that's at one. If you notice, my Y intercept is one and a half units to the right of my line of symmetry. So if I go one and a half units to the left, of my line of symmetry, I've got a, another point here. Now all I need to do is pick another convenient number to find its y-coordinate. And what I do is I try to find the next closest tick mark and put that number in for x in my equation. So I'm going to put a negative 1 in for x. So I get 2 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 plus 1. That's 2 times 1 minus 6 plus 1. 2 minus 6 plus 1 is negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So at 1, at negative 1, I have negative 3. And that's a half a unit away from my line of symmetry. So a half unit on the other one, other direction, I'm also going to have a negative 3. 
And then I connect it with a smooth curve. And I make sure I put arrows on the top of it. Any questions on number 12 before I do 18 on that page? Once you find the vertex and the intercepts that you're easily able to find, the me putting the negative one in was finding the smart X's to put into the equation. You want to find things that are convenient or easy to do math-wise. Okay, so I'm going to do number 18. Y equals negative 5X squared plus 4X plus 2. First thing I want to do is I want to find the X coordinate of my vertex. The X coordinate of my vertex is at negative B over 2A, which is at negative 4 over negative 10, which is positive 2 fifths. Notice that I didn't put the 2 times negative 5. You guys are in Algebra 2. You should be able to, once you know what the equation is, be able to write it down. My Y coordinate of the vertex, negative 5 times 2 fifths squared plus 4 times 2 fifths plus 2, which is negative 5 times 4 20 fifths plus 8 fifths plus 10 fifths. Notice this negative 5 and this, they each have a 5 in them, so I end up with negative 4 fifths plus 8 fifths plus 10 fifths. 18 fifths minus 4 fifths is 14 fifths. So I now have the vertex. The vertex is at 2 fifths of a 14 fifths. I like the fractional representation for writing answers down. For those of you that are fractionally challenged, this is 0.4 for me to plot it. The other one is going to be 2.8. So I do need to know what the conversion is if I'm not going to plot on a graph that's cut off by fifths. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So my vertex is at 0.4 or 2 fifths, comma, 2.8 right here. Close enough for government work. Once I draw my vertex, I remind myself that there is a line of symmetry there. I now try to find another easy point. If it's in standard form, there's my y-intercept, the 2. Because I am 2 fifths to the left, I have the number 2. If I go 2 fifths to the right, 2 fifths plus 2 fifths is 4 fifths, I'm also going to have the number 2. And then I want to pick a convenient x. Well, if I pick a 1, I'm going to have a dot that's really, really close to the one I already have. I'm going to put a 2 into my equation. So I have y equals negative 5 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 2. 2 squared is 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 10 is negative 10. So when I put a 2 into my graph, I go all the way down to negative 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Put a 2, I go down to negative 10. That is 1 and 3 fifths away. So if I go 1 and 3 fifths to the other side, which would be right about here, I'm also going to be at negative 10. And, oops, connect the dots. It's a very steep parabola. And I know it's very steep and upside down because of that negative 5. Um, I did say I'm going to do three more. I'm going to probably cut out six for right now. I'm going to do two more because I do have one more thing to teach. I'm going to do nine and 12 on the next homework. So nine says to graph y equals negative x minus four squared 
plus eight. So in this case, I want to find the vertex. The vertex is at the opposite of what's in the parentheses, comma, the same as what's outside the parentheses. Then I'm going to tell you a shortcut for my other points. Okay, once you go the vertex, then you're going to go over one, up A, over two, up 4A. In this case, my A is equal to negative 1. If I plot my vertex, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If I go 4, 8, then use Mr. Taylor's shortcut. If I go over 1, I'm going to go up A, which is negative 1 in this case. If I go over two, I'm gonna go up four A, which in this case would be down four. So if I go over one, I go down one. If I go over two, I go down a total of four. Same thing for the other side. If I go over one, down one, over two, down four. And I can play connect the dots. The reason why the over one up one, the over two up four works is because if I square one, I get one. If I square two, I get four. That shortcut will always work and it's the quickest, easiest way to get points from vertex form. Once you know where the vertex is, you can come up with the other points really easily. Over one up or down A, over two up or down four A. So vertex form is nice and easy to come up with a quick graph. And then the last one I want to do before I do some example work and maybe do some more examples after that is 12. Number 12 is in intercept form. Okay, um, I want to find the vertex. We know that the vertex x coordinate is at p plus q over 2, where my p is equal to negative 4, my q is equal to negative 2. Is that negative 6 over 2, which is 3? My vertex y coordinate, I put a three, uh, neg negative 3 in for both x's. I do my quick Mr. Taylor check to make sure those are opposite numbers, which they are. And I know my vertex is at negative 3, comma, negative 1. So I'm going to plot three points right now. I'm going to plot negative 3, negative 1. The other two points I'm going to end up plotting are my x-intercepts. So I have an x-intercept at negative 4. And I have an x-intercept at negative 2. I do have a line of symmetry that goes straight through that vertex. Now what I want to do is I want to pick in a smart number to find my next point on the left arm and the right arm. Well, to me, and, uh, and that, the next one, the one over would be a nice one, but Mr. Taylor's trick still works. There's a one in front of that group, and that means your A is one. Notice, from my vertex, I went over one, up one. I can, from my vertex, I can go over two, up a total of one, two, three, four. And do the same thing on the other side, go over two, up a total of four. And that would also work for, um, so that, that A trick, over, over one, up A, over two, up four A, works for the standard form, the vertex form, and the intercept form once you know where your vertex is. Another point that I could have found as a smart point is I could have put a zero in for both X's. And that would have given me the point zero comma eight, which is the Y intercept. So up here at zero comma eight, it would have crossed.
So that is but graphing them in various different ways. Um, I do need to show you how to convert from intercept and vertex form to standard form. And this will be the last of our notes. And then I'll discuss the homework and I'll discuss what not to do for your homework if you want credit. 18, I want to convert the following into standard form. So if I want to convert this to standard form, I need to follow order of operations. The first thing to do is to square that. So over here, I'm going to do x minus 3 times x minus 3. I'm assuming you don't remember any of the shortcuts from algebra 1. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. x times x is x squared. x squared minus 6x plus 9. Distribute. Subtract the 12. And that is converted. So you square the term, the x whatever term, then you distribute and you combine like terms. For 21, y equals negative 3, x minus 3 times x plus 2. If you write it out this way, you could use that FOIL thing, but I just do regular multiplication. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times x is 2x. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. x times x is x squared. I have x squared minus x minus 6. Distribute. That gives me negative 3x squared plus 3x plus 18. So basically to turn something from vertex form or intercept form into standard form, you just do the basic um, order of operations. I'm going to stop the recording um, and you guys can yell at me once it stops. I do need to show you what not to do.